Bank. Let's just go back to Friday, uh, Elise. The, the Fed sees that, that number, the GDP number. Was it Thursday? I don't know. Uh, but they see it, and suddenly <laughs> it's, wow, 2.6%. That's much better than a couple of down uh, quarters. Uh, so does that mean, oh, my God, we got to go another 75 at least twice because the 2.6 percent? Or do they see that friendly inflation uh, figure that was in there? What, what do you think was more important to, to, what, uh, to their viewpoint? Well, I don't necessarily think that we should miss the forest for the trees, so to speak. Um, that likely was kind of a bump in the overall context of the slump as it pertains to economic growth. To the details of that, you know that a lot of the upside was driven by the trade, trade component of GDP. Um, and you've still got these indicators like housing, which at this point, you know, within the GDP uh, report showed a decline of about 25%. Um, thinking about what we learned on Friday from the employment cost index, you know, sure, we're starting to see some price pressures roll over, but uh, that level of price pressure is still well above what would be cons consistent with the Fed's mandate. So we're not expecting the Fed to necessarily shift course and very much still think that they're on track for 75 basis points at this meeting and likely 50 basis points in December, uh, right in line with what they put out in the SEP a couple months ago. Yeah, I, I can see it that way as kind of a, a reversion to the mean in terms of both uh, the 2.6 and, and the inflation number not being quite as hot. But in a perfect world, that, those two things together are not stagflation. They're what we want. They're, they're economic growth with maybe uh, cooling inflation. Uh, the, the, and we've been so worried about stagflation you know, that I, I'll almost take it, at least even if it's just a blip, as you said, or a bump. But even when you said 50 basis points, that, I've been calling that a swivel. If it's not too, quick, too, too straight <laughs> 75s, it might not be a pivot. But the rest of the world seems to be swiveling a little, too. I don't, isn't, isn't the writing on the wall that, that maybe we're, we're making progress in what the Fed is trying to do, and, and maybe we're, we don't have to go? The, the worst case scenario is about how far they go that, that may not come to pass. Yes, and I, I do think that you saying, I don't want to call it a pivot, I'd rather call it a swivel, is you know right on course. We've known that the Fed had this intention of front-loading policy rate hikes, and it seems like we're kind of at the end of that period of front-loading. But to be clear, tightening is not over yet. Um, our base case expectation is that the terminal rate gets to 475. We haven't completely erased the probability of a soft landing from kind of our scenario analysis, but the base case is that with the amount of tightening that's already been put into play so far year to date, with the weakness that you're seeing in areas of the economy like the housing market, you know, we, we continue to think that there's a high probability that the U.S. economy doesn't get out of this unscathed. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're kind of positioning for the, the heightened probability of a U.S. recession starting in the second half of next year.